Right now, Israel is waging a war against the truth. I was struck by what you said a moment ago, that there is, in your view, no humanitarian crisis in Gaza. That's your view, right? Yes. Since the escalation began, we have noticed uh, hundreds of cases of people who were arrested, interrogated, following their activity on social media platforms. Also, a lot of uh, organizations have documented students have been dismissed from academic institutions. People have been dismissed from their work. Uh, there's been a lot of harassment at a societal level in Israel against Palestinians based on which pages they interact with, if they put a like on a certain post, if they follow a certain page that is sharing news from Gaza, for example. This harassment has touched many people of the Palestinian society, especially Palestinian citizens of Israel. It's being called a witch hunt because Palestinians are being harassed for the most basic acts that should be protected under freedom of expression and should be accepted in any normal democracy. But in this situation, it clearly those rights are not being respected. So even if you put a like on a certain post, you might get a summon or interrogated or arrested. There's even a bigger issue in occupied in East Jerusalem, there has been a lot of cases reported where Israeli forces in the occupied city are stopping Palestinian youth, forcing them to hand in their phones, looking through their phone, and based on the content that those forces are seeing, they would either beat up the Palestinians on the spot, take them away for interrogation, or just basically arrest them or detain them for a night. Sometimes they would uh, take them for longer. So yeah, this is something that we've been documenting as well. In the West Bank, uh, there's been many cases that were reported where Palestinians were detained or arrested from their homes. Their phones would be accessed and soldiers would post photos of the Palestinian on their own profile, change their own profile picture to the picture of the Palestinian with blindfolds and they would start messaging their friends and threatening people on their own platform. And then they would release the Palestinian because the Palestinian did not commit any crime. There's nothing to, to keep detaining this Palestinian for. But when they release the Palestinian, they realize that, oh, they've accessed my Facebook account, they've, they've communicated with my friend. We are documenting a lot of cases of disinformation by official Israeli accounts. And we are seeing how information is being weaponized to propagate hatred and incite violence against the Palestinians to justify the mass collective punishment of all Palestinians. <laughs> We are observing this violent rhetoric being espoused by many Israeli officials. It's an entire nation out there that is responsible. It's not true. This rhetoric about civilians not, we, we're not aware, not involved, it's absolutely not true. They could have risen up, they could have fought against that evil regime. Mine and Delik, all sagor. We are fighting in the and we are you know, the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister's spokesperson, the Minister of Defense, they've all used terms that describe Palestinians as animals and calling for mass violence that amounts to incitement to violence. Of course, many members of Knesset are very active on Twitter and they are also using genocidal rhetoric or using violent rhetoric on Twitter. Sometimes companies like Twitter does not take down or remove content that it deems to be coming from people who are influential in politics or are members of a certain government because they are technically state actors so a platforms like X Twitter would uh, put a label to limit the reach of this violent rhetoric without removing this content uh, completely off its website. Some uh, members of the Israeli Knesset are calling for a second Nakba. They're calling to commit acts of mass killing to kill thousands of people. Those calls for mass killings, the calls for wiping out Gaza, uh, the hashtag erase Gaza in Hebrew is not being monitored or moderated as heavily as Arabic hashtags are being moderated on Instagram, for example. Most of the violent hate speech that we're documenting, it's mostly in Hebrew. Of course, there are also platforms like Telegram where negative speech, hate speech, harassment are proliferating, but there is seemingly no moderation being done on Telegram's uh, channels. Since the 7th of October, we've documented a sharp rise in online hate speech and incitement to violence on major online platforms through our observation for Palestinian digital rights violations, HUR. We've observed hundreds of such cases, manually reported. Most of those cases were coming from uh, Meta's platforms, but also we've developed a tool called the Violence Indicator, which is monitoring in real time the spread of negative speech that includes hate speech and incitement to violence. So far, it's mostly effective with Twitter. We've documented nearly three quarters of a million of such instances of hate speech and incitement according to the violence.
violence indicator. We're observing a double standard here when it comes to moderating violent speech. Meta, for example, chooses to censor hashtags that are associated with the current events in Gaza in the Arabic language, but they wouldn't moderate the same parallel hashtags or even more violent hashtags such as Erase Gaza in Hebrew on their platforms because some of the content that is coming through those hashtags is coming from state actors and they deem those actors to be protected. Their speech might be with limited reach, but it stays online. On the other hand, Palestinian content, if there is a hint of violence reported, that kind of content would be removed completely from the website. Israel is waging a war on the truth. We do notice that there is not only propaganda, but a spread of disinformation specifically. Thank you for coming here. This is a time, our darkest hour. We have to defeat this barbarism. Uh, this is a battle between the forces of civilization and really monstrous barbarians who murdered, mutilated, raped, beheaded, burnt innocent people, babies, grandmothers. Uh, it's being employed to rationalize collective punishment of Palestinians against all Palestinians. And of course, misinformation of this sort is accompanied by incitement to violence. And it does increase the harm and the danger that is faced by Palestinians who are living here in the occupied territories. Since the beginning of the war, we've noticed that connectivity in Gaza has been reduced to less than 20% compared to what it was before the war. And throughout, we've documented how Israel had completely shut off communications in Gaza, turning it into an entire blackout of the region. And this is a situation where human rights violations are rife. And this not only disrupts residents' communications, but also hinders our outsiders' ability to understand the situation on the ground and allows for international law violations to continue in darkness. Internet connectivity is a protected human right. Communications are essential for the provision of critical emergency services across the Gaza Strip. It allows for people to access vital information during times of crisis. Denying people of this right not only violates their human rights, but also allows for Israel to commit more crimes in darkness, to hide blatant human rights violations from the eyes of the world, including regional and international human rights organizations. Since the 7th of October, we have documented an escalation in Palestinian voices who are being silenced. We've noticed how content moderation policies are disproportionately affecting Palestinians. We've documented how Palestinian journalists, human rights defenders, are among the most affected by this due to, to various policies of Onion platforms. And of course, at such a critical moment, it is very important for Palestinians to be heard. It's very important to maintain the right to free expression. It is very important to ensure that those rights are safeguarded because Palestinians are facing a flood of violations against their rights and major online companies should not be complicit in silencing Palestinian voices during a time of crisis. Meta's platforms, Facebook and Instagram, are among the ones we've documented were most uh, violations against Palestinian digital rights in terms of censorship, of content, takedown, account suspensions, etc. We worry that this kind of censorship is affecting journalists, affecting people who are trying to tell the story of what is happening in Gaza. Any kind of restriction on the accounts of Palestinians is directly affecting the information that we are receiving outside of Gaza. Since the beginning of, of this escalation, we had to intervene multiple times to protect accounts like, for example, Mataz Azaiza from Gaza, who is reporting minute by minute updates and giving us the footage and the real stories from the ground in Gaza. Such a citizen journalist like Mataz, his voice is essential. It's an imperative to actually protect such a voice on online platforms. Thankfully, Meta have been cooperative in making sure that citizen journalists, especially the ones reporting from Gaza, are not being affected by the over-moderation of Palestinian content and that their accounts are protected to remain to tell the story of what is happening from Gaza because we have a lack of resources, we have a lack of information and those people's voices are essential for us to know, understand and paint a better picture of what is actually happening so we can stop it. Hamle has been trying to communicate with Meta to understand why it took a decision to unpublish the page of Quds News Network in Arabic on Facebook. We believe that such an independent Palestinian news agency at this critical moment, their voice must be protected and must be heard and they 
shouldn't get their page unpublished. We've also been communicating with other news agencies such as 24FM who publish their news in Arabic and in English and in Hebrew and only their Arabic pages get restricted while the same content written in Hebrew and English does not get the same censorship. We find ourselves facing this pressing issue of how AI-linked dehumanization of Palestinians is taking place online. It's a concern that's been repeated in previous incidents including the distressing Instagram translation bug uh, where Palestinian was replaced with Palestinian terrorists on Instagram bio translation. But basically the company issued an apology to apologize for what they called an AI hallucination. But also there is a problem with how uh, WhatsApp's AI uh, generates images of gun-wielding children in response to Palestine prompt, whereas it doesn't generate such a response to Israel or even Israeli army. So we are witnessing that AI machine learning technologies are basically trained on data that is generally biased against Palestinians and they're perpetuating negative stereotypes against Palestinians and causing harm to users. Shadow banning is a term uh, that users are mainly using to describe when they experience limited reach to their stories, when they're experiencing various consequences, account restrictions. I believe that there was a platform's wide issue, according to Meta, where people's stories were not reaching anyone, any of the followers, and people noticed that the followership dropped from thousands to like a 10, for example, 10 or 15 or 20 which was an indicator that there was shadow banning ongoing. They say that they fixed this bug on the same day, but of course the idea of shadow banning continues because there are policies that restrict accounts and when people are resharing news content from uh, same accounts of the accounts that are sharing the news, when they reshare content, the algorithm on companies like Meta uses, the algorithm itself puts that story to the end of the queue. We call on international beauty bearers to uphold a balanced and non-discriminatory approach to content moderation especially when we're witnessing such violations at a large scale of Palestinian digital rights. There needs to be substantial progress in ensuring that digital rights are protected and we believe that online platforms need to prioritize comprehensive approaches that address uh, Palestinian rights and uh, conduct those operations in full transparency and in line with the United Nations guiding principles on business, business and human rights in addition to creating a safe space for all users and preventing violence and hate speech in all languages and not all only focusing on over-moderating Arabic content. Anyone who believes that their digital rights are being violated by online platforms is encouraged to report on uh, the Palestinian Observatory of Digital Rights Violations, HUR. Through the report, they can specify if it's a case of censorship, if it's a, a case of unfair content takedown or suspension of account. They can also and are encouraged to report uh, inciting to violence and hate speech in all languages. We are monitoring those cases constantly and are following up with online platforms to make sure that they are abiding by their obligations and are complying with the rules and the community standards that they've published.